Welcome to the season two kickoff episode of Mike Up or Shut Up. I got some special guests here today. Today we have the normal panel. There will be Miss Reagan. Hello. And Miss Angie. Hi. Mr. Christopher. Woot. <laughs> and also here with us today, a couple of longtime friends of mine with several years of law enforcement experience. We've got uh, Teddy DeLott, who has 17 years of law enforcement experience throughout several different agencies. That's right. And Lon St. Blanc, who is here with 15, 15 years of law enforcement experience Thanks through for remembering that, guys. a few different agencies. <laughs> yeah, I forgot you, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we're going to do some cop talk today. Well, today we'll, we'll call today's episode CopCast. <laughs> or allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly might be the way to go. Yep. That's a safe word. And uh, I think that Chris has a couple of questions we're going to ask our featured guests. Oh, I do. Boy. I do. Okay, so I, <clears throat> I think our listeners really want to know these. Uh, every single TV series by cops and almost every movie I've ever seen has portrayed this, so I want to know if this is true or not. That's right. All right. Does every cop carry a small handgun in case they accidentally shoot a perp with no weapon so they can just plant it on them and be in the clear? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the throwdown. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. No. It's called a throwdown. I've heard of it before. <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny the presence of it in real life scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> I carried one. <laughs> I like it. But I stopped carrying it because... <laughs> Finding the caps for those things were ho really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then they started making them in orange. So. Oh, the little red caps, though, yeah. with the little black spot in the middle. I used to hit those with a hammer when I was a kid. You, you oh, didn't yeah. need the gun. You That's just right. hit it with a hammer. That's right. It was great. Yep. <laughs> one of my supervisors had one of those BB guns that you used to get from Walmart, the little cheap pistol BB gun. Uh -huh. And he, uh, he carried that in his in his trunk all the time. Just in case he needed to throw uh, down. Yeah. He, he said it was for, for article finding for his canine. So <laughs> oh, <right. That's> allegedly <laughs> yeah, right. to train his canine on, on finding articles. Finding, finding we weapons, right? right? Yeah. You got to train the dogs, man. You, you know? got to train them. He used to have cocaine and marijuana in the car with him, too. Yeah. A lot of it. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> it was pseudo. It was yeah, pseudo cocaine. <laughs> it really wasn't actual guys, cocaine. Y'all don't knock I'm going to need you to speak up, Mr. Lon. Why? How did you get the nickname Pickle? <laughs> well, <laughs> present company. <laughs> uh, I believe we were at the casino. Yes, we were, we were. And I was enjoying a nice deal slice. <laughs> <laughs> Wedge, actually a wedge, and somebody decides to backhand me. <laughs> oh, and you just took in the it. wedge. He did. And he too. took it like a pro, he right? Did. I, yes, I he did. started choking. <laughs> it tickled his tonsils. Yeah. I promise. You. It took it like a pro. Yeah. Gotcha. There it is. And pickle was what they came and up with. And pickle was born. Not that deep. Is where I like it. Because I can't tell my other story up to why. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to tell it's that story at all. <laughs> 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 what, what else you want to know over uh, there? All right. <clears throat> Again, this is from the movies. I mean, uh, I've seen several documentaries called Lethal Weapon, and I've seen a few <laughs> uh, documentaries about a guy called Derry Harris. So I just want to know, does every department have a rogue cop who the chief can't control and who solves crimes his own uh, way, regulations be damned? <laughs> that, 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 that would be pickle. That would be pickle. Yeah. You want to field that one? Yeah, I guess I could. It would, I mean... We can't use names, but I will tell a story. Okay, tell us a story. Just wasn't having a good week. <laughs> it was Friday. Didn't shave. <laughs> and Bodie and Teddy also were in the office, and Chief started hollering at me uh -oh. <laughs> about shaving. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I decided to ask her, well, if I have to shave, shouldn't... <gasps> Stop such it. and such, shouldn't she have to shave her mustache? <laughs> <laughs> what was her answer? I mean, it's only Get fair. The fuck out of my office. <laughs> I mean, that's a legit question, though. I mean, we got right. a lot of those. Get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> well, this was From before. Me. This was before equality. Oh, okay, really, all right. You know, before the Me Too rampant. Uh, if you're a PM. oh yeah yeah, I mean yes, I did pull that from a from a Van Wilder. 
<laughs> the chief was going in on me. You know, this, that. And I was like, well, chief, if you're up here, who's running hell? <laughs> <laughs> like Again, it. get the fuck out of my office. Right. Oh, yeah, that's what you got. That's what you always get. You always get to get the fuck out of my office one. Ooh. All right, so this is a <clears throat> really important one, I think, is on everyone's mind. How often do women offer sexual favors to avoid legal consequences? Oh, yes. Yeah. That's, 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 that's got to be one. daily, huh? That, that did that's happen. definitely a Teddy question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, ha- that happened quite frequently. Uh, now, the first experience I had with that was when Bodie was training me. Uh-huh. And we, uh, we made a traffic stop on this lady, and, and she, she was standing in the back of her car, and I'm in the unit because I'm still training. And she had some really either short shorts or a mini skirt on, but it was really short, and uh, she didn't leave much of the imagination. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when Bodie sat down in the car, he said, uh, "She's getting two tickets because her inspection stickers expired." And I'm like, "Man, you really gonna write this woman a ticket? Like she's hot." And he <laughs> said, "Oh yeah, yeah. The hotter they are, the more tickets they get." <laughs> so that was a good part that he trained me on. Uh, but when he wrote her the ticket, she said, "After the show I put on for you, you're gonna write me a ticket?" He said, "Yes, ma'am. Sign in the gray shaded area." <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you why that is, though, and the reason that I trained him that way, because I always felt like if somebody unbuttoned their blouse and showed a little cleavage, this woman, maybe not the same one, but she's sitting in the car and she got a mini skirt on and she pulls it all the way up around her waist and she's sitting there with no panties on and I'm looking into the window of the car. Clearly, she's putting on a show. You understand? Mm-hmm. So I, I did the same thing. I went back and wrote her as many tickets as I could write. And she signed the thing, and she was mad when she left. But the reason that I always did that is because I always felt like it was a setup. Mm. I always feel like you the FBI or somebody, and you think I'm not going to write you a right. ticket, then you're going to get me in all kind of trouble for not writing you a ticket. Right. Not me. I'm not the guy. So that's why I And the other side quit. is that when, when you pull over an attractive woman, you know in the back of her mind, she says, oh, I'm not getting a ticket because this is a guy and I'm right. attractive, so mm-hmm. I'm going to put on a show for him and I'll get off. No, it doesn't work that way. No, you I, fix that. I want to know how many FBI agents, uh, FBI agents you have met that have showed all their goods to you working undercover. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> we can't talk about that on the podcast. I can tell you one <laughs> FBI agent assigned to them. <laughs> that was showing his b hole to everybody. <laughs> allegedly. 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 His b hole? Yeah, the b hole. You don't know what the b hole is? It's the butthole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm kind of wondering why. You, you know, you're known for butthole. saying fuck that b hole. <laughs> yeah. Like, that just sounded pretty tame. This is not a kid's podcast. I understand that, but. I like it's saying not people. a family friendly. <laughs> it's not, no, this is I'm not like, family friendly. You do not listen more to the one word oh, of the mouth. Okay. <laughs> what else you got over there, Pop? All right. Actually, this is actually a kind of a real question. Wait, can we pause on that? Sure, because there sure. was one incident that me and Bodie Yeah, let's hear it. In. No, let's hear it. There was, there was a, a certain woman of the night that me and Bodie had oh. arrested. <laughs> yeah. And she was, she was begging me and Bodie to, to, to put it through the cage while she was in the holding cell. Wow. Yeah. And then the yes. next day, uh, my mom was a dispatcher at Franklin PD. <laughs> and when my mom got there the next day, she was calling my mom mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, she said she was going to marry me. and So, uh, yeah. So, that, that story is true. <laughs> yeah, that did happen. That Bad did chases. Happen. Or, what what'd you call them? Holster snippers. Holster snippers, <laughs> snippers yeah. Oh. We used to call them badge bunnies. Right. Yeah, I've heard them called badge bunnies. Who who worked the case where y'all, someone stopped like two guys and a chick, and it was very clear that the chick was hiding shit in her hoo-ha, and y'all couldn't do nothing about it. But like when y'all had her like leave the truck or whatever, she was, that was waddling. That was me and... Yvette, and you were dis- you were filling in for dispatch, and she went to the holding cell, and we had a trap door, and it's like, ah, oh, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so she put it in the toilet, and you just pulled it no, right she out? she flushed it. Yeah. No, and on the back side, where Gus's office was, right. they had the, the little, little trap. The little trap, yeah. Still got got. But yeah, that one, we're not going to say her name, but even though you and I both know her name very well. Oh, yeah. (laughs) She just says, ooh, you're so sexy today, Teddy. I want to do it with you. 
but she didn't say do it, right? She was <laughs> being real sultry. In my beetle. <laughs> and she was back she was back in the Maybe holding cell all there. by herself down the end of the hallway. She wasn't in the main holding area with all the other prisoners. She was just by herself. So she wanted to stick it to She that. wanted yeah. Teddy. She didn't ask me because she knew it wouldn't have. It wouldn't reach. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted Teddy just to stick it. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I got like two inches of duty, bro. <laughs> right? And you got all kind of pepper spray and stuff yeah, on the front. I, I couldn't you smash that right. up with you, with, with the pee holes going to go through. <laughs> Make it? Yeah. <laughs> certain people take DNA samples. She was literally. <laughs> <laughs> she was literally on her knees at the at the case. Oh yeah. Waiting for it. Wow. And I said, Teddy, just so you know, don't think about doing that when I'm not here because that's exactly how you get fleas if you lay down with your <laughs> Yep. While well, I'm not yep. here, wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you how. To <laughs> Yeah, if we're going to do training, I'm going to train you on everything, right? <laughs> you know, that did happen. That was a true story. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. All right, so in all seriousness, uh, is a citizen's arrest a real thing? I didn't think so. No. Yeah. I've never heard of it. I've never seen anything like it. People can call yeah. you and sign an affidavit, which means that they would be testifying and you wouldn't have to as the officer mm -hmm. involved. Uh, but they, they would still have to sign an affidavit. Yeah, I mean... It, they can detain, and that's what they refer to. I mean, I always assumed that if you actually did that, like if you held a gun on a criminal or whatever, told him not to go anywhere, that their lawyer would sue you for impersonating a police officer, kidnapping, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of those things, yeah. Right. No, because the first question that they would ask you is, what are you trained in? How do you know that probable cause exists for you to detain this person? You know, right. yeah. there's a lot of things that you would have to know to be able to do that. Right. So, I... Being for, former law enforcement, I wouldn't do that even today. My recommendation, because I did concealed handgun classes for 10 years, and I always told people, just be a good witness. Don't involve yourself. That's it. Yeah. Because if you do if you do pull a weapon on someone and you have to shoot them, then you, you could still possibly be charged, even if it is justified. Mm -hmm. The DA's office can choose to, to charge you and, and put you through the ringers at trial. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that's more than likely going to happen is you're going to get sued. Yeah. Right. Whether you injure them, they'll sue you. And if right. you kill them, their family's going to sue you. So. The best thing you can do if you, if you want to take part and in, in if you see something going on is just be a good witness for, for the cops. Yeah, criminal charges is one thing, but being sued civilly is a whole other animal. Right. It's a lot easier to sue you civilly. They don't, you don't have to have, like, the full beyond a reasonable doubt right. type thing. Yeah. It's just a preponderance of the evidence, so it's just a lot lesser to do. So civil charges, civil uh, suit, civil lawsuits would be a problem. Okay. I wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. That's what, I mean, I always thought that seemed sus in the movie. When I'm making a citizen's arrest, I was like, yeah, what? It's, it's fake. Yeah, okay, I thought so. It's fake. Goddamn Hollywood lying to me all the time. <laughs> Big movie, bro. I don't know what to believe yeah, now. Yeah, I don't know what to believe. That's it. <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to tell a story that happened to me and then ask y'all uh, your thoughts oh, on Lord, it. Sweet baby so, Jesus. I get off of work one night. No, this, this is a true story. So, I get, off of, <laughs> I get off of work one night. I'm driving home. So, it's a two-lane road. No other way to get home. Traffic backed up like crazy for no apparent reason, right? So finally, what it is is um, in, right before town, it was like a subdivision where I was coming from, and then right before the main part of town, there was some houses scattered here and there, and there was woods all behind them, okay? So in front of one of these houses, there were, I counted, there were over 30 cop cars. I counted 30 mm -hmm. as I was driving by, but there were more than 30. There was a SWAT van, and there were cops that were actually had their guns drawn, hiding behind the police cars, popping the heads up, ducking back down, popping the heads up. So I'm sitting there driving by going five miles an hour going, holy shit, I'm about to get, you know, about to be under fire here. What is happening? Thinking it's like a hostage situation or something, you know. So I get home, tell her about it. We turn on the news. And what happened was there was an old man living in his house. He hears a noise. He calls the cops. And they fucking all shit their pants. And that was the reaction. No one had even gone into the house to check to see if there was someone in there. As it turned out, there was no one in the house. So all of that foolishness, for nothing. That no, it was a big deal. That happened like in Charles. Moss Bluff. Yeah, oh, I was well. in Moss Bluff. I just want to point out. So wow. that is what is now being referred to as the Uvalde effect, where cops are terrified to put their lives in danger, you know, to actually stop a crime. Right. So my question is, since y'all been on the force for a long time, like, how prevalent do you think that really is? Because I feel like, not maybe back in the old days, but I feel like now it's really becoming a thing. I don't know what you think, Lon. We... I was when I got out, 
I mean, it, we were starting to get to that point. I was on the tail end of it. Yeah. Um, it, it's always better to have more people. Sure. <clears throat> but as far as I mean, I've never that that was part of how we we roll in Franklin. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. We, oh, it, and we got I, somebody with a knife, and it's like oh yeah. Yeah, I was telling him before. A lot of us, when when we used to roll together, we would always show up on the other person's scene just because we were bored, yeah. just because <laughs> we wanted to hang out, you know. Yeah, right. And right. that was legit why we would right. just rolled three deep sometimes, right? Because we wanted to be hanging out with the other fellas, right? I'll give but, you a, a good story, not to interrupt you, mm-hmm. but my first day with Franklin, Teddy mm-hmm. makes a traffic stop by the mill. We pull up. It's the middle of February. Cold as all shit. And we go to fighting. Mm. Yep. We go to fighting. I almost, we I him. almost wow. shot him. <clears throat> you almost shot Teddy? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. The suspect. Um, I almost drowned him in the inch of water that was in the ditch. Mm-hmm. He reached for my gun and I almost, I almost drew my weapon. But we had four, we had five cops that that had him. And and what happened is he he snorted a line of powder right before mm. the traffic stop. Oh! So he was feeling nothing. Yeah. We had, yeah. We we were using. I mean, line at one point was kneeing him in the ribs and wasn't even flinching. Right. Yeah. Con- considering how this guy was one of the finalists for the Olympics. Holy smokes! Yeah. So. His his adrenaline, stamina, everything was just through Sky. the roof. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that was first day on the job. First day. You first well, well, first day patrolling in Franklin. It's like <laughs> eh. Yeah. This is cool. We always got fun stuff on the first days. But right. to circle back to that whole thing about everybody showing up. There was it was a burnt headlight. That's what, that was the reason for the traffic stop. A burnt headlight. Wow. There was five of us from the PD and two or three. No, there was three of us from the PD and two from the sheriff's office. Two from there the sheriff's office. Okay. There was five right. on, on the scene. And it took all five of us five minutes. It was a fight for five wow. minutes before we had him in custody and in the car. Wow. Wow. In fact, uh, the, the animal warden at the time showed up to help as well. Yeah. Yeah, you even enlist help from the dog catcher. And he ain't a small boy. No, no, no he's no. a big fella. He is a big fella. But on and I, I think to to address the Uvalde effect, the, the fear for your life, I always felt like I was scared all sure. the time. And I think having that fear was healthy because fear will keep you alive. Yeah, of course. The minute you're not afraid, that's when you're gonna get dead. Well, I mean, what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about that. I mean, obviously. I mean, only a psychopath wouldn't be afraid to, right. to, but, but I mean, like cops who refuse to put themselves in danger to protect themselves rather than civilians. Or hey, I didn't sign like up. You know, when, when, it, when we it had a couple like, of people at Franklin PD through our tenure that that, that would we would get called to a to a complaint, <clears> and <throat> you would see them driving the other way, opposite way, uh-huh. away from the complaint, yeah. Yeah. to wait for someone to get there first. And yeah. we had wow. we had people like yeah. that working for us, so. But it wasn't near as prevalent as it is nowadays. Yeah, I feel. And, yeah, and I don't want to bash on the cops nowadays because I'm not in it anymore. Yeah, but it was a, it, it was definitely a, a whole nother world when when we were all at Franklin PD together. But on that same note, you almost have to understand where they're coming from these days, because even when you do a, an exemplary job and you are performing at the highest level of your ability, the media will still string you out to dry based on circumstances. You know well, that is, true. Yeah. that is true. That is true. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Is yes. Us up. Everybody's yeah. filming. Yep. Well, one complaint I hear a lot from uh, current law enforcement is the the lack of support from yeah the district attorney's office mm. from uh, yep. from the management or the uh, the administration of, of departments. I mean, they're quick to throw these officers under the bus yep. for simply right. doing their job. Absolutely it's ridiculous. Which is why you have a lot of the stay in the car syndrome now. Sure, right. they're just going to stay in the car and drive around. And nobody's getting out. Who wants to? Why? What's the purpose? No, right. You know. Well, I mean, I always felt like uh, when they started uh, the whole, when they started that whole movement about all the cops should have body cams and stuff. I felt like they they wanted that 
to prove that the cops are doing the wrong thing. But I feel like it's going to be the exact opposite, yeah. that it'll prove that the cops are doing the right thing. It's funny when that whole thing started because we also wanted those cameras. Oh, yeah. We, we wanted them more than they did because we felt like they were going to protect us. Right, right. <laughs> Once you see what really is going down, you're going to understand more. It's going to be more for us to prove mm-hmm. our right. correct actions yep. rather than you. you when, know. They, when they put those cameras in the units, I don't know of anyone at, at the police department that wasn't thrilled about it because good. Oh, yeah. now, now when we go to court, you know, we're going to be able to see the, the court, the, the, the jury or the judge, you know, they're going to be able to see exactly what it is that we're dealing with. And that's, that's what happened. Yeah, we were you know, nine times out of 10. It, 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 it showed that the officer was in the right. And you know, the, the, the suspect was shown in, in his true colors mm-hmm. instead of what right. you see in the courtroom. Yeah, that's yeah. A, is that gluten free? <laughs> <laughs> is is that gluten free? He wants to know. For those Mr. who are, Mr. Teddy's yeah. wife was nice enough to drop us some almonds and some crackers yeah. and some snacks for us to hey, enjoy hey, this that's evening. our word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't say cracker? <laughs> <laughs> you can say cracker. You can't say cracker. Oh, you can't have that hard R. You can't have that hard R. <laughs> but first days, I want to tell what you told what your first day at work was like. I want to tell you what mine was like. My first day at work was back when there was no overpass at 3211 and US 90. Mm-hmm. And there was a, a crash at 3211 and 90. And I just rolled into the office and chief says, come with me, we gotta go run to this crash. So we go to the crash and it's a yeah, fatality. Unit? What? And the biggest unit? Yeah, yeah, I rode with her and her. Oh, you ran to it. Though. Well, yeah, well, you know, we was exercising right. a little bit. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was a fatality. And when we get there, this guy's got a softball-sized hole in his skull, <gasps> and he's sitting in the driver's seat. And the passenger, you could tell he was full panic mode because he was trying to dive into the back seat when the car T-boned him. And the front, the two front bucket seats, when the car took the impact, they smashed together. So the guy that was in between the two seats just got pinched in mm. half Ooh. between the two seats. So he was gone when we got there, but the guy with the softball-sized hole in his head was still Aguilar breathing when we got there. Right. So when I pulled up, I was trying to ask him how he was doing, and I was talking to him, and he was just <laughs> like that. Like, I watched him take his last breath. And that was on my first day at the job. So when I went home to go to sleep that night, buddy, I was seeing all of those images every time I closed my eyes. It was crazy. And it's amazing how that first day, that impacted me so hard. But then five years down the road, I see the same thing. There was uh, on Irish Bend in the curb, Dead Man's Curve, there was a truck that went off, overcorrected, hit the telephone pole, and the lady's leg was pinned up behind her head, and she was split down the middle from, right. the, from the gooch oh all the way up. Oh, God. And, <laughs> and, and that didn't even, I didn't even bat an eye. Right. You know what I mean? And you, you worry about whether you're getting callous. To the to the type of things that yeah. that that you got mm-hmm. you got to look at every day. <clears throat> so I think, a, I think it's a switch that you just kind of yeah you have to. I mean you look, have to look. Prime example with my brother. Yeah, working working that night, not trying to bring it all somber. We having a good time, but on patrol that night, and you get a phone call saying that I think your brother was in a wreck, and you're the first one at the hospital to find your brother dead. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it was rough. That was that's, a rough night for that's us all. When the, that's when the little switch kind of gets flipped, and it's, all right, we're just going to stay in the on, off position from now on. Yeah, for know? sure, right? For sure. God love duty. Everybody love duty. May he forever rest. Yeah. <laughs> and me and Bodie experienced our first autopsy together for a homicide. That was fun, wasn't that it? Was, that was very interesting, yeah. Did very. you put the stuff under your nose? No, no. No, no it, it was not a decom. No, thing. Oh, okay. Decom, but, uh, it, it was and good. We had a good doctor there too. That was in Lafayette, and uh, he was he helped us out a lot so far as uh, going through it and what to expect before we even went in there. So that was interesting. Yeah, and, and we ate hamburgers right after. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was a big man. What, what, yeah, uh, tell him how big I was whenever it went down, though. <laughs> so was it you and I, or was it? Me and Cap that uh, went to the autopsy where the guy busted the bladder. Oh, 
no, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, it was instant. Oh. (laughs) 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 Yeah, we get to see a lot of things that nobody ever wants to look at, and not many things really, other than that first day incident where I wasn't prepared. Other than that, nothing really struck me and, and stuck with me, but that one situation where there was that four-month-old baby that died from SIDS, and we arrived, and the mother was panic and frantic and said her baby's not breathing, and we start performing CPR on the baby, and I ride in the back of the ambulance with the baby all the way to the hospital, and the baby expired, of course. And at the time that that took place, I also had a four-month-old child at home with me. So that kind of hit me. There was individual moments that stick with you, but they weren't, they were far and few between after the beginning. Right. I find. Well, we had the one from St. Martinville that uh, had shot and killed his girlfriend or his ex-girlfriend and came to Yeah, Franklin that's and, a crazy and, and story. And I pursued him to, uh, to, to Irish Bend mm-hmm. right off of Caffrey Curry. Yeah, the backside of Irish and Bend. And when, when he stopped, he, uh, I, thought he, I thought he had his hands up. But he had, put, he had put a gun in his head and pulled the trigger. He shot himself right in front of me. Right in front of you. Wow. And uh, yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Had, but he only had one round left in the gun after that. Yep. So I, I don't know if he knew that, and that's why he did it, or why he didn't do suicide by a cop, and it was me. Why he didn't make you shoot him. Right. 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 That's but crazy. Was, yeah, I saw the dashboard video of that particular incident, and it was just unreal. Mm-hmm. Unreal. A lot of shit, bro. A lot well, of I'm shit that you. you put your eyes on, you know? Yeah. Now, the, main, the worst I ever saw, I wasn't on duty. I, I was working for the marshal's office at the time. We were on our way back from Homer. And uh, we, we were coming back from a Mardi Gras parade, and I saw they had a bad accident on Highway 90 in Centerville involving a school bus. So uh, I was volunteering with the fire department at the time, so I came and dropped Celeste and the kids off at the house, and I went back out there. And it was, uh, I want to say, it was four, there was five people in the car, that hit the school bus. They had, they, had, they had a flat tire in the front. They lost control. They were spinning as they crossed the median, and then they, the bus hit them. The school bus driver never saw it, and it was uh, in the school bus was the Lafayette High School baseball team. Really? And there was five people in the car, and four of them ended up dying. The only one that didn't die was the, uh, the front passenger, I believe. And one of our firemen at Centerville one of the one of the fatalities was his stepson. Wow. Which oh, he wasn't a hundred percent sure at the time, but he had told me he said because uh, he he just didn't look right. He was you know out on the highway kind of working traffic and uh, so I went and asked him well, you know if he was all right. And he said, man, I, I think one of the I think one of these kids is my stepson. So when the troop got there and they wanted they needed someone to identify the body because we hadn't identified anyone at that point, I told him and we went and talked to him. Well, I ended up going to each of the bodies to to, to help him to identify the body to be there for him. And uh, one of the victims was a six-year-old girl, mm. and mm. it was it was very very gruesome. So rough. That, that one stuck with me, you know, just just because it was a child. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rough stuff, man. Yeah, that's, I don't think the average person thinks about that kind of that aspect of police enforcement. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people, when they look at you and you're wearing that uniform and that badge, they have no idea what you experienced that day. Right. You know, they encounter you at the worst moment of their life. Right. And they have no idea what you've gone through prior to that moment. And it's just unreal, the level of shit that we used to look at, you know, for real. And, and that's gotten kind of serious. We got all kind of crybaby and stuff. Let's get, let's get fun again. Let's, what you all got right. on there that's well, going to left? Uh, okay. Laugh. Did you get uh, a serious yeah. question? Yeah, no, you no, did. No. I, don't well, want, I don't want to get serious anymore. We, what, what was the serious question? No, it wasn't no, a question. Was Teddy, Teddy was talking was telling about stories. Yeah. death. Okay. Yeah, well, well, more dead people, <laughs> you know. I think uh, the audience would be really upset if I didn't ask this question. Uh, to the three of you, uh, what's your favorite kind of donut? <laughs> I don't like donuts because I got that old sugar for it. But he likes pickles. No, I like big butts. Bear claws. <laughs> I, I was waiting for somebody to say apple fritters. He don't like no. He don't I, like donuts. He like bear claws. Nah, I, I don't have sugar for it. Just to let everybody know. Um, I I'm gonna be honest. Uh, coffee and donuts. I did not. I I did not fuck with them. Well, we worked in a, in a municipality that didn't have a donut shop. Right? Yeah. So we weren't uh, privy to that type of atmosphere that all other cops are. And be like, no, you know? that's a conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> a conflict of interest. 
However, though, you're talking about coffee. Me and Teddy did have coffee every morning when he was with the the Reds, and we enjoyed those moments. Yeah. The visits. The yeah, visits I, were real I, good. But I, I just, I was never, now, monster Red Bull, whatever. Yeah? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would indulge in donuts away from the public. I, I never let anybody <laughs> Yeah, last thing you want is a stereotype. Is, right, yeah. But in, yeah. in private, it was chocolate eclairs, I'll tell you. Chocolate eclairs. <laughs> yes. sure. Oh, yeah. I'm an apple fritter man myself. Love apple Knew fritters. Knew it. Those are delicious. Oh. Delicious. I told Chris to say that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate. Oh, this is my question. All right. So, has anyone ever asked you... Uh, as a police officer, to harass someone for them. You know what I mean? <laughs> like an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend yes, or something. Yes, multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In he, fact, he's walking away. He asked me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give him no razzle-dazzle. Fuck him. <laughs> oh, yeah. A mad girlfriend. and Oh, well, you know, he drinks and drives all the time, and y'all need to watch him. Mm-hmm. I knew it. Yep. Yeah, that definitely I, is a thing. That definitely is a thing. Not to necessarily harass. You know what bothers me the most? Talking about people asking you to harass someone? When a parent will ask you to threaten their child with going to jail if they don't behave. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty common. That's actually pretty common. It is common, and it's uh, so unfortunate. What was that? I'm sorry, I missed that. When a parent would be there and the kid is being all bad and stuff, and they say, hey, can you, that that police officer is going to take you to jail if you don't behave. I always no, I go up to him and tell him, I, no, I'm not. I'm not taking you to jail. No, I act like an ass. <laughs> <laughs> you just cut up like you want to, young man. Do your thing. <laughs> now, I did have one that, the same situation. Y'all need to come get her. She's acting up. I show up over there. 15-year-old girl. Got a knife, a butcher knife. Swinging it around. I said, you need to drop that. Yeah. We about to have problems. Yeah. And... She got embedded into the side of a trailer. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like the coyote when he goes to the <laughs> <laughs> He left the imprint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take her to jail. Okay. Yeah, man. Well, she did have a knife. Well, yeah, she did. And she didn't drop it. I mean, that was a valid And point. that was before I got oh. the taser, so. <laughs> nice. I like donuts. You like donuts? Oh, I love me some donuts. I told Chris you were gonna say. I told Chris I said Buddy's yeah. gonna say apple fritters. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, I do. I do like apple fritters. Now they have a donut shop. They do. They do. We don't work there anymore though. I think you were the last one out. Is that right or no, wrong? No, Teddy, Teddy was the last yeah. one out. Yeah. Well, really, well, the last one of us three. Uh, Gunner was the last one. Yeah, Gunner couldn't Richard be with us crew. tonight because he's at work. Yeah. He was gonna come, but I had a good story with Gunner. The keg. That, yeah, the keg. <laughs> uh, he. Um, and so happened, my brother was involved with it too, Luke. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess I could tell it. It, it ain't gonna hurt. It, we so, don't mind. So it was referencing uh, Saving Silverman, the movie. Yes. Remember the house we always used to get the alarm call at? On Iberia Street. No, on uh, Oak. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So my brother Luke decides to come ride with me one day. Kennedy and Rod were riding together. So we get an alarm call at that house. On the way over there, I'm like, damn, I'm hungry, dude. Let's go take care of this and, you know, planting a little seed. So we all, we get all stacked up and everything, and we walking up to the house real quiet. And I'm like, hey, Luke, after this, we're going to stop and go get a double bacon <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and we walk up a little bit more with cheese. <laughs> he holsters his gun. Kennedy turns around, starts laughing. He's like, what? I'm like, dude, we come to this. All the time. Kennedy walks in the house and punches in the alarm the code. code. Yeah. yeah, it's like, okay. Yeah. You son of a bitch. Yeah. And you're cutting up on the way in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but... Goes to show you, I, it would have been that one time I'd have yeah. got my ass shot off. Yep, that yep. would have been the yeah. one time yeah. that you just got relaxed. Oh, I just wanted a burger. That's all <laughs> I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want a burger. Love it. All 
right, well, that was unfortunately the end of the funny question, so... Oh, shut up. <laughs> the rest of the questions were thought of by Angie, so they're not funny, because she doesn't have a sense of humor. Um, I thought that was Reagan. Yeah, well, both of you. Women, Correct. Women, <laughs> women are not funny. That right. Is, that is a scientific fact. That is it is proven. Sex. Yep. Oh, yeah, there's no rules here. Right. We don't conform. Well, except the N-word. We can't say that. That is the one rule. <laughs> that nacho. is the one rule of the show. definitely can't say nacho. Well, I yeah. Nacho. You can't say <laughs> yeah. it. Not here. Yep. Where's all my nachos at? You yep. can't say that. Well, I can't even say that. <laughs> 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 Let's see. I'm trying to say. Um, did you, do you ever regret being a cop? you ever wish you hadn't done it? Yes. Do you? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, know. you said that You said that yes really fast. I was I like, know. Hey, okay. No, I, I never regret it. I I regret the invention of the camera phone because that was when they that they stopped being able to put shit up people's asses. <laughs> <laughs> really push their shit in. You know? Hey, you ever had your shit pushed in? I get it on a daily basis. <laughs> there was some financial regrets as I got older that you know had I gotten out sooner. Maybe I'd be better off financially, but but the regret of the job, I enjoyed it, and I don't think any of us did it for financial gain, obviously. No, absolutely not. But no. uh, it, it's either it was either in your blood or it wasn't, and we had a really good group of guys at Franklin Police Department, and that's what I miss. I mean, I, I searched for that for what seven years after I left the police department, and it, it just wasn't the same. I mean, when, when you have that one group of guys that you come up with and, and you work with for so long, it uh, when it's different, it's different. So. Yeah, I don't regret doing it ever. In fact, uh, if I had it to do all over again, I would probably still go the same path. I uh, could never go back and do it again. Obviously, the climate has changed, and it's a lot different than it, than it used to be for us back in the day. But I miss sometimes, I miss the job. Yeah. Because you'll hear us, when we talk to each other, you'll hear us call one another brother. And that's because... We built a camaraderie when we were doing the job where we had to literally depend on the other person for our life. Right. And when you come to realize that you can actually count on this dude in the direst of circumstances, that person becomes your brother. And that means a lot to me. And I wouldn't give that away for anything. No, right? I mean, the bonds that we built, I mean, we, you know, We've had, what, two or three uh, gatherings of the, mm -hmm. the original Franklin PD boys. That, the OGs. You know, the, 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 all of us that came together. and I mean, people come in that we got some that live out of state. You know, they come down and we're hopefully going to be doing that again real soon. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, we just get together and, and it's like we never left. I mean, we've, we've been apart several years. And it's like we, it's, it's like, it's like we're still, we're still working at the police department and we just mm -hmm. all show that's up awesome. the shift. Yeah. 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 And, and that's yeah. every time any one of us, I believe, sees each other. <laughs> it, it, right. We pick up right where we left off. Well, when Bobby was still local, how many times we'd go to his house? Oh, oh yeah. Fat Boys. Oh, fat Boys, yeah. I, we I used got, to go to Fat that's Boys that, Bar that's and Grill. That's where that come from. I, I got a yep. bunch of Fat Boys material. Yeah. Got some swag. What? One <laughs> of our lieutenants, when we were in the department, actually built on the back patio of his house a little bar. So it was almost like a, a nightclub style bar. It was a full, the bar was the full length of the little room. Uh -huh. There was several bar stools and then the bartender would stand behind. There was bottles and things all on the wall. He had signage like that TVs. all over the place. <laughs> had like a Jägermeister dispenser that kept I've it cool. I've got that. It's in the shade. It's not a, a lot of different stuff. So wow. it was just like a bar. Yeah. And because we couldn't go and let loose in public, right. he built that back there for us to be able to go and let loose amongst one another. So we used to go hang out there all the time, and it was the greatest. It and was and we never had to drive home from there. You know, you, right. You go, yeah, it was great. All kids were out of the house, so right. Right. Go, go sleep in the bedroom. Yeah, that sounds yeah. amazing. Good stuff, man. Yeah. It was really yeah. good stuff. Wow. All right. So uh, <clears throat> do you feel like, because I feel like this is true, even though I'm not a cop, you feel like they've lowered the standards for accepting people as police officers? <laughs> I, don't, I think they. I, I, do, I believe they lowered the standards, but I think they lowered the standards because of the applications that they get now. They don't. Right. They don't have. They don't have high quality. They don't have high quality people, people that are interested in the job anymore. Right. Yeah. So and so so yeah, they, they they didn't have a choice but to lower the standards. Right. right. Now it's yeah. well another thing too is I I don't think they lowered the standards. I think they upped the standards to. 
Now you're going to get somebody go and get a college degree thinking they're going to make more. How are you going to be in duty shape or duty fit, as they would say, sitting in a classroom for two years out of your life, getting no road experience, getting none of this experience. Oh, yeah. You got a college degree. Here's a gun. Here's a badge. <laughs> right. Well, the state police found that out in the early 2000s. They stopped hiring <laughs> the snacks based off back. of experience. Yeah. Uh, they stopped hiring based off experience God, and, only, just, and yeah. only started hiring people with college well, degrees. You know, and right the turnaround rate was something crazy, like 75%. I mean, within the first five years, 75% of the, of, of the people they hired with college degrees would quit. Right. Because they, they, they didn't know what they were getting themselves into. Right. Yeah, because so, a classroom right. cannot prepare you for all right. that shit. Right. 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 Not at all. Thank you for the snacks yes. again. Yes. <laughs> Man, we have to do this more often. Right? Right? We're getting fed like getting kings over here. Left and right. yeah. Wait until she starts bringing out the shots. <laughs> yeah, that's, hey, that's I'm weird. here for that. <laughs> Is that blueberry? <laughs> You just ate that off oh. it. You need to eat Don't tell me piece. what to do. Don't tell yeah. me what to do. <laughs> yeah, woman. Woman. <laughs> Don't tell me my business, devil woman. <laughs> but, you know, I say that, but they, they do have, they do still have some good cops out there. I know some of them. It's not, it's not all of them. But I, I don't think uh, the, the lack of, I, I can see where they're coming from. Like, like we had talked about earlier and touched on it. I mean, if, if, if my administration and the district attorney and, you know, they're not going to support me in, in performing my job, then to hell with you. Why would I perform my job? Right. right. Yeah, why would you ever get out of I don't blame them one bit. Yeah. You know, they probably have a lot more potential than what they show, but but why? Why go out and be aggressive if you're just going to get attacked at the end of the day? Yeah. Right. It's not yeah, worth I, it. I do think it's such a hostile environment for, for cops. Oh, yeah. It's so hostile. Oh, yeah. And even politicians are like, F the cops. F the cops. We don't need them. <clears throat> we'll go have people, social workers, negotiate with them. What mm -hmm. kind of bullshit is that? Right. I mean, it is. It is bullshit. Well, you know, right. the inclusivity... Aspect of hiring. Now, I mean that that video that came out a couple months back in Chicago. Those four women, four women who were not in shape. Let's put it that way. Tried to arrest that shoplifter, and they fought the guy for like five minutes, and then he eventually broke free and ran away. I mean, they were not able to hold they him up. Get I mean, they couldn't push him up against the wall. Nothing. So I mean, you know, you see videos like that, and it doesn't make you feel safe. No, I get that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you a story that's not even mine, but it's it's from way back in the day. Uh, some, some really old school cops, and they they were getting they, there was two officers that, or two deputies that worked for St. Mary Parish that were getting a lot of complaints on them for roughing people up. So the district attorney himself decided he was going to go and ride with them one night. So he rode mm -hmm. with them one night shift, and they were having problems with thefts at, at farms. So they they riding around and checking on all the farms and, and uh, on all the back roads, and they see this guy parked in his vehicle, you know, messing around with the farm equipment. So they pull over to. To, uh, to talk to him and, and he just starts going off on him and uh, they end up they end up having a fight with him and they get him handcuffed and uh, well I'm sorry before they got him handcuffed they they, uh, they were trying to be they were trying to restrain themselves and the district attorney stepped in and said hey man look you know they're just trying to get some information maybe you need to calm down and the guy hauled off and punched the district attorney in the face. <laughs> nice you know he's not a cop he's not wearing a badge you right. know, fuck right. this guy yeah right, right. so uh, so they, they they grab him and handcuff him and throw him in the back of the unit now this is this is before we had they had cages in the unit I mean I'm talking 60s 70s you know so the district attorney they're checking on him like man you alright you alright he said yeah I'm good I'm gonna I'm gonna go in the car and see if they got any uh, if, if y'all got any napkins in there you know because his nose is bleeding this guy <laughs> damn near broke his nose some right. contraband so, so the district attorney goes in the in the unit, and uh, next thing you know, they hear all kind of shit, and they look at back. He's in the back seat beating the shit out of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's wailing on him like, like just beating the brakes off of him, right? Allegedly. allegedly. And uh, so, so now they got to go and grab the district attorney and pull him off. And uh, the next day, the district attorney went to the sheriff at the time, and uh, I think it was uh, Chester Bodoin. And said that, that that's two of the most gentle police officers I've ever seen. Any complaints they get from now on is unfounded. <laughs> <laughs> that is the greatest story I've ever heard. <laughs> right? Yeah, you can pass what judgment you, until you you're the one getting your nose right, punched. Right. 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 Well, and yep. all of a sudden your perspective changes. These district yep. attorneys and ADAs, that's what they need to do, is they need to they need to get out of the comfort of their home and go ride with these police officers to see what it is right. that they're dealing with. Absolutely. Right. But you're yeah. not gonna get that. No, that's yeah. not gonna happen. That's not absolutely not gonna happen. Pickle. What? How you doing, Pickle? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> that Kraken's talking. You want one of these nuts? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm allergic to tree nut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. All right, uh, I'm running out of questions. Uh, why don't you, uh, before I ask me any more questions, why don't you, Reagan wants you to tell a story about uh, whenever you uh, changed the defendant's plea because you were so awesome on the, on the stand. Oh, I don't think you don't want to tell that story. A, I don't that's think that's a, a real thing. That's not a good story. I, I think you, we you were, tell the story because I don't think. That okay, it, so we were talking about how. You were there. Did you? <laughs> I was there. Uh, did he have any moments he was especially proud of? And, and this one jumped to mind. He actually wasn't a, a cop anymore, but he had been subpoenaed because at the time a murder occurred, he was the detective working, so of course he had to go to court and testify. And the guy had pleaded not guilty. And uh, the defense lawyer had a, a list of phone records to ask Bodie about, you know, relating to the murder or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently he had never questioned Bodie before because Bodie will make sure that the info that he wants you to know <laughs> is going to get said. Yeah. So while the lawyer may have said, you know, what is this call on this day at this time, Bodie's going, yes, but also see the five calls before that or the five calls after that. Like he was drawing that attention, not letting the attorney lead the show. Mm hmm Somebody testified, I don't know, maybe half an hour at least, but he was in there for a good while being testifying. So after Bodie testified, he took a break, and the guy comes back and changes his plea to guilty. <laughs> yeah, the, the, they, they let the jury go, dismissed the jury, and then the defense attorney asked for a recess and went to recess and talked with his client, and the client came back and pled guilty. That's awesome. Because yeah. Bodie pretty much just Good job, Bodie. demolished. So you, so you single handedly convicted a guy of murder. That, single handedly <laughs> with my blue suit and red cape, I handled business. There you go. That's awesome. And he only got paid fifteen dollars for doing it. Yeah. Right. Here's your fifteen dollars and I go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> they yep. they wouldn't even pay him as a cop. Yep. Teddy was my guy on the big case that we had together, that rape case. You remember the rape case? Yeah, I remember that one. What in the park. The one in Catholic oh, Park. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I was the first one on scene. That was, mm -hmm. that was, was that, crazy. That, was that before or after I saw it? No, it was after. It was late in my career. Yeah. I was I was the detective on call. And in fact, that was the first that was case. before I started. No. Yeah. How could that Eddie be? Eddie was there two years before I started there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah that was, that, how could I that was, be? Because I was late in no, my career. Like, that no, was no, literally no. one of so, the last years that I was. So, that no, you got, me? that's that's wrong, Bodie. You got, you got put in detectives right after I got released on the road by myself. Well, the second time you had no, to you're, because you had I, to Yeah, the that's correct. But what I'm trying to tell and you is I was is almost that, fresh out of the academy when that happened. Yeah. That, right. was one of, that was one of the first, that, well, that was the major, the first major case I ever was part of. Right, so was but, but here's the thing, though, what I'm trying to explain to you is that I was in detectives for a while before they would let me be lead on a felony case like that. So I had to, ha in order for me to take lead on that rape case, which I was, because mm -hmm. Cap didn't come out, it was just me. For me to be lead detective on that case, I had to have been in Well, detective. he might have been away on vacation or something. I mean, it was early in my career, I can tell you that much. Uh, that that was probably in either like 03 or 04 yeah. okay. when that happened. Semantics. Yeah, right. Either way, it doesn't matter, right? But no, what happened there, was right. when we got the call, Teddy calls me on the phone, tells me what he got, and I said, Teddy, they about to bring her to the hospital. I need you to go with her to the hospital and stay there with her and don't leave her side. I don't care where you go, what you do, you stay right there just in case she has a dying declaration. Right. So he had to hear everything that she said from that moment all the way up until mm -hmm. that expiration. And then I went to the scene and collected all of my evidence and everything. So we, he was he was good. He did a good job. He was my right hand man on that case. And there was another murder on uh, Mechanic Street that I was I was there with you. Yeah, and yeah. I had to go in. KD. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> How about the, the time we went to Shoney's after the guy bit the girl and Shoney's? We don't even have a Shoney's. We went to Lafayette when it was still open. Oh, you mean we was just partying? <laughs> Like, no, I was, <laughs> no, no. Hey, we said we call. weren't talking about the Lafayette trip. <laughs> yeah, we can't talk call. about Lafayette trips. No, no. Because right. I know it's the right spot, you, but you, you, will, you can't you go there. You will see why I'm the rogue. Uh, <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. He is the rogue cop that you were asking about earlier, by the way. That's I like 100%. it. I love it. I love it. Um, no, when uh, the guy 
I was working patrol that night, and the guy bit. Like they went to the club, they came home off a of short third. Oh yeah, no, no, that was on uh. That area. That wasn't the one on Iberia Street. <laughs> no, it was short. Okay. Short. Right. It was that by by Joe's, and uh, he bit her up. When damn near bit her nose off. Whoa! Shut the fuck up. Yeah, like what is it, like thirty something bite marks. Yeah. What the. F- all over her face. He just he went Cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer. Dahmer. Yeah, yeah, he went Jeffrey Dahmer on that ass. And he <laughs> Damn. he Literally. called he called Damn. the chief and asked for me to go because I was there. I was the first officer on site. We went up there, went interview her through. I mean, it was like interviewing the Invisible Man. You know? <laughs> Bandages all over the yeah, all right. fucking place, and. Uh, Like, okay. And you know, it's like, what? Eight or nine in the morning? Mm-hmm. Fuck it, let's go to Shoney's. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that bacon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were thinking about bacon. <laughs> and I sausages. saw her. I saw her. <laughs> Did it make you think of bacon? Like, yeah, I was like, huh, her nose looks like a fucking piece of bacon hanging. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go fucking eat. And you know, like I told you, that switch. Well, maybe that's why he bit her. Maybe he was thinking of bacon. No, it's, it's called meth. Yeah. yeah. That's Allegedly. Meth, though. That's very messed up. No, it, wasn't, it wasn't alleged. It was, yes. <laughs> oh, it was there. No, uh, he had it in his pocket and, <laughs> and in his bloodstream and yes. in his, up his nose. Well, I all over the place. I caught Teddy say a few minutes ago that you had to train him twice. I did. So I want to know why <laughs> he had to go through remedial. Okay. <laughs> yeah, remedial training. Are you going to tell it? You're gonna no, tell you it? can tell the story, but I want to reserve the right to offer rebuttal. Okay, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> So fresh out of the academy. Well, first of all, during the academy, I was training with both Bodie and Gunner. But after once I got once I graduated the academy, they put me with Bodie. He was my FTO. Now, field training officer. I will say this: in his defense, they gave him two weeks, and we were working a night shift. And for those two weeks, there was nothing going on. It was a very quiet two weeks at Franklin Police Department. Um, and the majority of the time was spent. Riding around, I was driving, checking buildings, and Bodie was reading a really good novel. It must have been good because he was in it, into it. It was Stephen King. Right. Um, so at the end of the two weeks, they cut me loose and they put me on days with another supervisor. And every complaint I went to, I had to call the supervisor <coughs> to come because I had no fucking idea what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so finally, after about a week of that, the chief calls me in her office and she says, uh, why are you calling your supervisor for every complaint? I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And she, so then she calls Bodie in, and, and Bodie steps up and he says, you know what? It was quiet two weeks, and it's my fault. I, I, I didn't go, you know, I didn't show him, you know, we should have done more. So uh, she said, she well, I, I, I'm going to have to put him back in, in the FTO program for at least another two weeks. And he said, well, put him with me. I'll do right this time. And boy, the shit hit the fan after that. That was. <laughs> yeah, we, we did shit probably. Yeah, oh, we, had, we had some fun <laughs> at that point. That's so in my defense, right, mm-hmm. I felt, I was very young at that time, and I don't feel like I should have been a field training mm-hmm. officer, first off. That was my first time ever being in a leadership type of a position yeah. in my entire life. Okay? And before that, before, we, we hung out. We, we, we yeah, caught yeah, out and we were buddies. drank we together. Had, and, I mean, sure. so, yeah. you know, it's not a good thing to train your friend. Yeah, we were, we were playing yeah. too much. Right, not yeah, right. Focusing on the yeah. work energy. Playing hide and seek on, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> really and truly, though, what was going through my mind when I was training him was when they take a baby and they want that baby to know how to swim, they just throw it in the water. Right. And yeah. the baby just instinctively <laughs> learns how to swim. And that's the way that I was trying to train him, just saying, here, you take the unit, you take the keys, you drive the car, I'm going to sit here and observe, and you're going to just have a trial by fire. That's the way it's going to go. And you're going to learn more that way because you're going to be involved, you're going to be doing it. You're not just going to be watching me do it. That's what I thought. Really? Because it sounds like what you're saying is, I didn't feel like doing anything. <laughs> yeah, there's some of that. It was there a good some of that. It was a good <laughs> number. <laughs> there is some of that. But once I realized that he was not properly trained, yeah. And I got yelled at by my boss. <laughs> I decided I was going to do it right again the second time. Because y'all didn't have me there. To... <laughs> who was, 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 was your training officer? Billy May? Mm-mm. 
No, no, I was Billy Mays training officer when he came back. Okay. You, so, they let you train people? Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the shit. Who was your training <laughs> Who trained you at Franklin PD? Tina. Tina, okay, yep, yep. For a week. And it's like, okay, let him go, fuck him. Yeah, <laughs> and, and after a week, you were confident enough to go out there and not have to call the supervisor every time. Yeah, because he just, he just was rogue, and he just he like just fuck it. This he is just did it his way. Mine was already a better bullshitter than I was. That's all that was about. That seems I mean, right. Yeah, yeah. That's I had, I had 14, you know, 63. Right, you know how fast right. you were going? Right. Right. What would Mel Gibson 75, do? 75, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never calibrated my radar a day in my life. <laughs> All right, well, let's get one final question in here. Uh, for people who are thinking about becoming police officers, do you have any advice that you wish someone had told you before you started? Oh, that's a good question. Ooh. I wonder who came up Spend with that question. Spend all of your paycheck on the nicest gun you can find. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Luke. And then sell it two weeks later. <laughs> Luke. <laughs> oh, man. I, I have some advice, actually. And it... <clears throat> I was a reserve cop, by the way, so I do have a little experience. But it's more from watching him work all those years and mm -hmm. being home with the children. Because Franklin is such a small department, there's not a lot of people that work there. Therefore, every holiday, everyone worked. Mm -hmm. So Bodie constantly missed birthdays, uh, in, in trick or treating, he didn't trick or treat ever with his kids because he never got a Halloween off. Right, you know, like right. every holiday he worked, and therefore every holiday he missed with his kids, and he missed a lot of stuff that was important that he would have rather have been there for. Sure. So my only thing is, if you have small children, make sure that there is a schedule where you put time aside to have with your family, mm -hmm. because the job will call and it's not going like. When you're called, you're expected to go. Sure, yeah. of course. Well, yeah, that's 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 really good advice because one of the biggest reasons why I left the job was because it was my whole life. It ran. It consumed your entire. It ran life. me from the moment that I woke up to the moment that I went to bed, and it didn't matter if I was on duty or off duty. I was always expected to do the job, and it it consumes you. It does. It, it runs you from the moment, the entirety of your life, all of it. And there's nothing in the world that exists other than the job, you know? Yeah. And I just, I didn't want to be yeah. that guy anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. I had to give it up. So that is good advice. Good advice is take time for your family. Take time for yourself and, you know, definitely don't give yourself to the job. The nope. two main points that I, I touch on and, and I did I did throughout whenever I was a train officer is, for one, you have to have integrity. And nowadays especially because <laughs> there are always cameras on you. But everything that you do in that uniform act as if somebody has a camera on you, right? So you know uh, that's going to save you from a lot of a lot of heartache at, at, at the tail end of, of any case. And the other thing is remember that when when you're dealing with somebody, it doesn't matter if it's a traffic stop that you initiated or a call for service that you're on. That is the most important thing going on in that person's life at the time. And and while. Wow, somebody somebody's calling you because their neighbor's n music is too loud is not important to you, and you don't give two shits about it. That's important to them, and you got to treat it that way. And if you give if you give your citizens respect, and that's one thing we always did, you give your citizens respect, they're going to give you respect in the long in, in the long run. And there were more criminals who would have us three and several other names I can mention at Franklin PD, they would have our back if we were getting our ass whipped on the side of the road. Even still today. Even today. Even still today. And that's because mm -hmm. we gave them respect as human beings. And if yeah. you do that, you're gonna you're gonna get the respect in your career and, and you should you should be okay. That's a fact. Lon? As the uh, as the rogue uh, <laughs> <laughs> No I and this is how we've all talked and everything else. I would have to say if you wholeheartedly want to get into it and the only piece of advice, find what we have right now. Mm -hmm. Find the camaraderie, mm -hmm. find the brotherhood. Yeah. Find find your people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There look, <clears throat> you might have a shithead in your group, but you straighten them out. You take care of it. You you don't get this right very often. That's right. So, that's and a fact. You you have to find 
your people mm-hmm. and hopefully your own decent people. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. And one last piece of advice if you're thinking about being a police officer is don't. <laughs> no, right. go for it. Yeah, I mean, All jokes aside, I do have the highest level of respect for those that do the job now because you have to be a different type of animal to Ooh, do the job in this yes. today's climate. 100%. Yep. So anybody that's out there wearing the badge currently, big ups. Real talk, yes. big ups. Because in order for you to do that job in today's climate, it's a, it's definitely a sacrifice. Absolutely. And also, I, I, I'd like to say this as well because they've had some instances before. If you run, a, if you're working and you're in law enforcement and you run across a prior law enforcement officer, maybe have a little bit of respect for that guy. And the reason I say that is because that's the ones who are really going to help you out when you're in a bind. And it, there's, there's just sometimes that, that, that I've, it's happened to me. I've been out for almost seven years now. And there's been times when officers just kind of ignore me. Don't, they don't, right. And, and, and uh-huh. I mean, I'm, I'm not there to try to get in your business or find out, uh, find out any information. If I, if I ask you if you need any help with something, it's not because I give a shit what's going on to tell my family. It's because I really want to help. And I think most prior law enforcement officers that are in the civilian world today are the same way. They're, they're willing to help you. And if you allow them to help you, believe it or not, you may learn something from them. Facts. Big facts. Guys, I want to say from the show to you guys, thank you so much for allowing us to be here. Thank your wife for all the wonderful snacks that she has provided for us. Thank you all for the invite. I enjoy it. No, it's, I have listened to I, I have not listened to all of the, pa- the, the, the episodes, but I will. <laughs> I have listened to a lot of them, and I do enjoy it. I want yeah. to, I'm, I'm one of your five listeners. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. That's, how you, know, that's how you grow, no, one listener at a time. I'm going to go run through them now. <laughs> I don't do shit at work. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> so might as well pop it weekend, up. You know, I mean, He's still yeah. a rogue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, really? Even there. Chris is and a rogue. We'll let Chris do job. his uh, movie Chris recommendations. Is a rogue too. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to do it. Yeah, you ready? Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'm, yeah, I just want. I want to thank you guys. Also, this is a good time. I really enjoyed this episode, and uh, hopefully, maybe we can do it again. Uh, you know, yeah, got some. Absolutely. We're down. We, maybe we can get a few more. You know, a couple of different. Yeah, some different blood. Some different blood. That yeah. might have some different stories. Yeah, that'd be awesome. What we need to do is get y'all need to get Bobby Hines whenever he's in from Arkansas Ooh. because he's got him and Chris. Too- if you can get Mary? Bobby Hines yeah. and Chris Freeman together. Get ready for a two-hour episode, and it's going to be worth it. I promise you. Yeah, yeah. It'll be worth it because the stories Non-stop those guys laughs. have Non-stop are laughs. unbelievable. Excellent. Well, Bobby will, now lives off the grid. Yeah, yeah. he's off oh, the grid. Really? We can yeah. find him. We, we yeah. dropped the pin. Oh, no, yeah. but I mean, they, <laughs> yeah. that, that right. is the life right. they have right. chosen now, and well, they love him. it. Good That's for him. That's awesome. Yeah. And if y'all ever need to get in touch with me, it's 1-800-PICKLE. <laughs> E-L. E-L, not L-E. It's E-L. <laughs> Yes, indeed. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. So since uh, we were interview- talking about Law Enforcement Night, uh, I chose two movies, uh, a movie and, and the sequel to that movie, and it's uh, about detectives. So I figured that would fit in with the theme tonight. So uh, the first movie is called Murder by Death, which came out in 1976. Stars, uh, it has an ensemble cast, Alec Guinness, Peter Falk, Peter Sellers is Obi-Wan. in it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, you'll, it's a comedy, so Obi-Wan you'll see him in a different light. <laughs> <laughs> it's the kind of movie that will offend people nowadays uh, because Alec Guinness plays a blind butler, so there's a lot of blind jokes. You know, blind people can't do things jokes, which is very funny. I love it. And then uh, Peter Sellers plays an Asian, and they gave him we slant love eyes. Disabilities, don't we? Oh, well, it's the best. I mean, it's the best. It's the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Screw the handicap. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I mean just uh, for laughs. Oh, I mean, right, right. Not, not, yeah. Satire. Yeah, right. Yeah. Satire. Yeah. Yeah. Allegedly. So, right. I have three handicapped children. I think that gives me the right. <laughs> to make fun of handicapped people? Wow. Well, okay, I don't think other handicapped people feel that way. Hey, thoughts. I watch one of your handicapped kids roll down the stairs on purpose time and time again on the Grand Robert Show Road. So, yeah. It had to have been Dakota. Dakota. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was like, that was Dakota. He would, run, he would dive out of the, the dog door. Yes. Out and roll down the steps, and, and I'm looking like he's fucking dead. He's literally he's two or dead. three at the time. And he jumps up and goes. And he jumps up and he says, "Who?" And he do it again. And I'm like, "All right, that's bro, my kid." This is what yep. we're doing. It sounds like a terrible parenting <laughs> it from is. this side of the it table. Is, definitely, he is still alive. <laughs> right, that is true. That is true. So, uh, all right. So the movie, uh, sort of, uh, it's uh, of course somebody gets murdered, and it's a whole bunch of people trying to solve the crime, and it sort of uh, accumulates and trying to make fun of 
famous crime novelist is basically the point of the movie. It's a it's a very funny movie, and uh, <laughs> Peter Falk, you know, who went on to be Columbo, he, he's in it. He plays a detective, and his character was so popular that they actually did a sequel with just his character. It was a spinoff movie with just his character called The Cheap Detective. Uh, the Murder by Death came out in '76, and The Cheap Detective came out in '78. Yeah, again. Are you saying cheap? Cheap, yeah, yeah the cheap, the yes, cheap detective, yeah, yeah. That's what they call me. Oh, so. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you were the wrong I, cheap actually, detective. No, I'm sorry, I take that back. They call me the cheap dick. Because <laughs> <laughs> it didn't cost much for you Fuck to pull it out. No. <laughs> so actually, the, the funny thing about this movie is uh, my running joke on the podcast where I'm always saying you can get thanked, you know, and go thank yourself. That actually comes from this movie because what happens is... uh. His, there's a part in the movie where his secretary helps solve a big part of the case that he couldn't figure out, and he, he wants to thank her, and she tells him, I've never been thanked before. And he says, really? Well, I've got to go out, but when I come back, I'm going to give you a really good thank. <laughs> <laughs> That's one for you there, Pickle. You can definitely go thank some people. Oh, thank yourself. Pickle, get thanked. I thank a lot it. of people. Yep. Well, I guess uh, I guess that's about it. I guess we're going to wrap, wrap it up. Yep. So, well, season two is kicked off. Yep. Yep. Oh, but you didn't say. Oh, big dog, Uh-oh. big dog. Oh, you sure exactly. didn't, man. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I was disappointed. I almost mentioned it, but you know, I didn't want to take away <laughs> well, the podcast. I was I was just too wrapped up in you guys. You know what I'm saying? Well, is this going to be on the YouTube? No. It's well, just, eventually it's it will. Not right at the moment, but eventually it will. Yeah. <laughs> it's on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Though. Yeah. 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 yeah I watch it. I, I listen to it on Spotify. Yep. Yeah, I want an iHeart and Amazon Music. You know, we're on thing. Audible. Yeah, so yeah. So we're on Public. multiple different platforms, baby. Yeah. So we can accommodate any any listener. Yeah. Just come I on want, in. I want royalties. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> well, if we start making money, we'll keep that in mind. Well, hey, I'll give you <laughs> bring that tip some royalties right now. Yeah. Be careful. Right you get the royalties, you might have to start paying for shit. I don't yeah, for the snacks. I don't, snacks. Give, a, I don't <laughs> give a fudge. <laughs> My son won't have a laptop anymore. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> Big dog, big dog. All right. Big dog. See y'all next week. Bye. Goodbye.